While laptops are normally the realm of the small, portable, you know, travel computer, there is a segment of the market that has gotten much bigger, much heavier, but also much more powerful options. And thankfully, that segment has also started to get smaller and smaller, but just as usable. Two of the most popular options in the little big, little big category of laptops, as I'll call it, is the 2019 MacBook Pro and the brand new Dell XPS 9700. Which one comes out on top? Let's find out. I'm not gonna slam, it's, they're too heavy to slam down. What's up everyone, I'm the Everyday Dad, and if I can figure it out, you can figure it out. So these two computers are really darn exciting and really impressive from both companies' perspectives. MacBook is coming from the side of taking their previous 15-inch model, which did have some thermal and quality control issues, cough, cough, butterfly keyboard, cough, cough. They made it a little bit bigger and basically totally fixed and secured their space with the MacBook Pro 16. I've, I've talked about this device a lot, because frankly, it's awesome. Dell, on the other hand, hasn't had a 17-inch XPS model in a long time. The latest one I could find was the M1730 from back in 2008. This new 9700 is right in line with the 9500 we talked about a few weeks ago. And honestly, I really do think this is better than being just a bigger XPS 15. Now, I don't do a lot of benchmarking or numbers comparisons between computers, especially in these devices, because there are so many options out there that vary vastly in terms of price and capabilities that I, I don't think benchmarking really has a place here. Frankly, I'm not all that interested in numbers. What I care about is how these could fit into my own personal workflow of both the YouTube videos I make here, but also my office work in my day job where I make a lot of spreadsheets, make a lot of PowerPoints, and go on a lot of business trips. So very quickly, let's cover the main specs of both laptops and then we'll start comparing the ow, and then we'll start comparing them against each other so long as we're not hurting ourselves. First up, let's talk the MacBook Pro. The MacBook Pro 16 inch starts off with its base model at $2,400 or even lower because now this thing goes on sale pretty regularly as it's about what, seven, eight months old? For that base model price, you get a 2.6 gigahertz, six core, ninth generation Intel Core i7 processor, an AMD Radeon Pro 5300M with four gigabytes of memory and 16 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM and 520 12 gigabytes of solid state storage. And honestly, that's not too bad spec to price wise. And you can even get these things like this one that I have right here is refurbished. You can buy them refurbished directly from Apple for a couple hundred bucks off. You can take that modest base model and spec it all the way out to a 2.4 gigahertz, eight core ninth generation Intel Core i9 processor, 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, and the brand new Radeon Pro 5600M and the craziest part, an eight terabyte solid state drive. That model is insanely awesome, but it's also insanely awesome as an awe-inspiring price for $6,699. <sighs> that continues to be roughly the same amount that I paid for my 2016 Yamaha FZ07 motorcycle. That is not a cheap machine. The Dell XPS, on the other hand, has a much more modest base model, which, for the record, I don't recommend that base model. If you're gonna get a laptop that's this big, the base model just doesn't make sense to me. But that base model comes with a 10th generation Intel i5 four core processor, eight gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, integrated graphics, and a 256 gigabyte solid state drive, all for $1399. One thing I do wanna note is that base model, much like the XPS 15, has a traditional heat pipe thermal system, and we'll talk more about the upgraded thermal system here in a little bit. I consider the XPS 17s to have like, three tiers. And I do want to mention the second tier because that's the model that I personally purchased. It has a 10th generation Intel i7 six core processor, eight gigabytes of RAM, a GTX 1650 Ti, and a 512 gigabyte solid state drive. And now that we've entered dedicated graphics land, we have a beefier vapor chamber cooling system. From here on out, you can go all the way and get a 10th generation Intel i7 eight core processor with an RTX 2060 Max-Q, 64 gigabytes of RAM, and a two terabyte solid state drive with an updated UHD plus touchscreen display. And that beefy system will run you $35.99. So it does cost substantially less than the top end of the MacBook, but it's also less powerful. While we're talking about specs, I do wanna mention something that's pretty drastic between the two machines. The MacBook is the MacBook. What you buy is what you get. All of the components inside of this machine are soldered down. So there is no way for you to change that. If you like, let's say you buy it and you decide, oh, I need a little bit more RAM or a little bit more storage space, you're out of luck. 
That's it. That's it. You'll have to buy a new one. However, here in XPS land, you can absolutely upgrade both of those components. And it's really, really easy. Like, you know my catchphrase, right? If I can figure it out, you can figure it out. It's That's really proven when having to do this. Because I don't have all that much technical know-how, and even I can put in 64 gigabytes of my own RAM and an extra one terabyte solid state drive without bricking the laptop. And it only took me a few minutes. If I can do it, I mean, seriously, anybody could do it. Like, if you aren't planning on taking this laptop anywhere, if you're not gonna travel or go to work with this laptop, like, why not just get a desktop? You can actually get way more power for way less money if you use desktop class parts instead of trying to turn a laptop into your main productivity machine. Unless, of course, you are an Apple user like me and your base upgradable desktop starts off at $6,000 with a 256 gigabyte solid state drive and 32 gigabytes of RAM. Ouch. The XPS 17 being a 17 inch laptop, yes, it's the bigger of the two devices. And while it does feel like a pretty darn big laptop, it doesn't feel unwieldy. That's the term I'm gonna use, unwieldy. Now, I use it a lot for comparison in the XPS 15 videos, but I personally have a Dell G3 15 inch gaming laptop to play all the games that my Mac won't let me. Basically all video games. And I would consider that to be an unwieldy laptop. And I would not wanna take that anywhere. It's big, it's heavy, it's unwieldy. And while the XPS 17 is just a little bit bigger than the 15 inch gaming laptop, it's much thinner and almost a pound lighter than the G3. Now, this isn't a video comparing the XPS versus the G3. It's just to say that even though this is a big laptop, it's easier to carry around than a smaller gaming laptop from the same company. Plus, this is also definitely bigger than the MacBook Pro 16, but thankfully it does fit inside of a standard backpack designed for 15-inch laptops. This is a standard option that I found searching for 15-inch laptop bags on Amazon, and the XPS 17 does fit in it, I mean, it's close, but it does, I mean, look at that. It does fit in there pretty well. The MacBook size-wise is just a little bit bigger than the MacBook Pro 15, and it does fit inside most of the same sleeves and backpacks as that smaller laptop. That's really where, if you were a Mac user, the 16 is like all pluses. I really can't think of many negatives, size or portability-wise, upgrading from this, upgrading to this from the older model. And it's really, I gotta give Apple credit when it comes to portability because that's where they win. If you're gonna be plugged into the wall, I think the Dell can easily stand toe to toe in the power department. Heck, even this mid-ranged version crushes this top end processor spec MacBook Pro for Premiere Pro rendering by minutes. But the second you unplug it, the tables turn. Even when you mess around with Dell's power settings, you will still lose a, a ton of horsepower when not directly under power. And that's not just this laptop, that's other Windows laptops too. The Mac though will give you the same power whether or not you are plugged in. It's that's a fantastic system. That is a fantastic system. And this is despite the fact that both computers have pretty similar sized batteries. 99.7 watt hour battery on the MacBook Pro and 97 watt hour on the XPS 17. When you consider that you can do everything no matter where you're at, so long as you have battery power, I have to give portability to the MacBook. We touched on this a little bit already, but both of these computers do pack in some serious processors. Eight Core i9s on this one and up to eight Core i7s on this one. That is... That's some serious power, and that serious power brings some serious heat, which is something that I actually think is the most important, is probably the most important factor when considering a new laptop, thermal performance. If you're gonna buy even a heavily specced out computer, if, you're, if it's gonna thermal throttle, then you're wasting your money. Both of these laptops have gigantic cooling systems on the bottom, which honestly did leave me a little concerned for the XPS. I mean, this is a gigantic vent, and it has a little bit of a dent right there. Uh, the XPS 15 I've been using has a lesser processor and not even a graphics card, and while it's never thermal throttled on me, it gets really close, especially during long-term loads, like rendering a 10-minute YouTube video. So when I first got this, I was pretty concerned with the bigger processor and having a graphics card. Well, thankfully, the thermal performance on the 17, it's really good. Like, it's really good. When running that same 10-minute 4K file through Premiere Pro, the heat never becomes a problem, and I think it's due to one of two things. One good one kind of bad. The first is the vapor chamber does an excellent job keeping everything cool with these two gigantic fans. They will turn on, especially if you're using Dell's power performance mode, 
but it's never so loud as to be distracting. However, the other reason is I do think I'm having a bottleneck somewhere in the process when it comes to video editing and rendering. I never get over 30% CPU usage during that rendering, which it's great for the thermals, and the render speed actually isn't all that bad. Like we just said, it's faster than the MacBook, and it's so much faster now that I've upgraded the SSD and the RAM, but if you invest in a beefy CPU, you kind of hope to get a lot more out of it. I think that bottleneck might have something to do with the 1650 Ti as it doesn't have access to some of the newer encoding technologies, but it does lead to a balanced computer. The MacBook Pro 16 is a thermal beast, but in a good way of having excellent cooling capabilities. Much like the XPS when doing bigger, longer video rendering tasks, either using Final Cut Pro X or Premiere Pro, you barely task the CPU much at all. Now, I can't use the exact same thermal throttling program on both computers, but running a script in the terminal that shows whether or not the max CPU is overheating, it never ever shows me that there is a problem. Not when running Cinebench or doing back-to-back -back 4K rendering tests. So the big laptops all have big cooling system. Now let's quickly touch on the physical build of the two computers, and here they are pretty similar. The XPS 17 and the MacBook Pro both have four USB-C ports that are Thunderbolt 3 capable, and they both have a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. But, but, the Dell has the most coveted of all ports, the SD card slot. I don't exactly know how to use After Effects or any kind of like graphics system or program, or like right now I would animate like some sort of glowing angel wings onto the slot, like, ah. Dell wins for ports, SD card slots trumps all else. Comparison over. Comparison over, Dell wins. When it comes to the displays, you can get the XPS 17 with two different options. There is a 1080p-ish panel and a UHD level panel. Now I don't wanna say 1080p and 4K because it's technically not, as these are 16 by 10 and not 16 by nine. The headlining feature of the XPS display is how small the bezels are. It's crazy crazy small. I was really impressed on the XPS 15, but it's darn jaw-dropping on the 17. Having the bigger display with thinner bezels, it's just amazing. Like, it's really a 17-inch laptop with a 16-inch laptop body. That's not to say that the MacBook's bad. The MacBook Pro 16 also has much thinner bezels than its previous model, and when you look at it in isolation, they're great. I like having the smaller bezels here on MacBook to MacBook, but nothing I've ever seen on a Mac computer stacks up to Dell's offering. It only has the one resolution option for the Retina panel, but despite just only having one option, it's probably, I mean, that's a good option to have if it's one of the best displays in the market. And I'd be totally remiss if I didn't talk about the things that I'm always looking to critique. Like, right? Like the thing that everyday dad, we're, I mean, we're gonna rename ourselves to everyday typing guy. We gotta talk about the keyboard and the typing experience. Both of these computers have pretty similar center-oriented keyboard layouts. The MacBook is running the newer version of their older style. I don't know that that made sense. The newer version of their older style Magic Keyboard, and it's great. I don't have much else to say about the typing experience here that I haven't said before. This is amazing. The keys are snappy. There's just about the perfect amount of travel. And the way the laptop body is laid out, there is a huge palm rest to keep your hands and wrists in a neutral position. If this is not the best laptop typing experience on the market, it's pretty darn close. It's pretty darn close. The XPS 17 is complicated and I wasn't exactly prepared for that. After how much I enjoyed the typing experience on the 15, I figured since this was basically just like a bigger model, it would be better because that's how logic works, right? Bigger equals better. And as far as the actual keyboard goes, it's basically the exact same thing as on the 15. The keys are a little less snappy than on the MacBook, but it's not bad. And using these Dell keys for a long time doesn't produce much, if any, hand strain for me personally. But you will get this bigger body and a bigger palm rest. And I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is, but I feel like I can't just get on a comfortable typing position on this keyboard as much. It's almost like too much of my palm is on the body. And with the sharp edges of this lip here, it's actually kind of uncomfortable on my forearms after a while. Like you have to be perfectly like level with the keyboard to get a great experience. And it just, it just hurts. I did say there was kind of the same problem on the 15, but it almost felt like on the 15 because it was a little smaller. At least for me, there was a little crook in my forearm that really kept there from being an issue. But it's, it's just not aligned the same way on the 17 but this carbon fiber still feels really good. And let's talk about the laptop bodies. When we talk about the trackpads, the MacBook Pro wins. They just, they just have the best trackpad out there right now. 
I do like that Dell is starting to put bigger and more refined trackpads on their laptop, and it's getting really close to the max, but it's just not quite there yet. And I'm not sure about the quality control on this new Dell line. As the 15s, we've seen plenty of reports of problems with loose and double clicking trackpad. And this one doesn't double click on me, but it does feel a little loose, which is kind of disappointing. But at the end of the day, so what, right? Which powerful yet portable, monstrous yet demure laptop comes out on top? This one's pretty tough. This is a pretty tough call for me. Obviously, if you are a Mac or Windows diehard user and you want to stick with what you are comfortable with, by all means, upgrade from your older version to these newer versions. I have no problem recommending either the MacBook 16 or the XPS 17. But where it gets sticky is, if you are like me and are currently debating on which system to go with for your next like computer upgrade, it's tough. It's tough because I really love, I really like the ecosystem, the ease of use, and the travel power of the MacBook. But I like the upgradability, the NVIDIA graphics card, and the SD card slot on the XPS 17. Both of these computers are plenty powerful, have great thermals, excellent graphic options, and I have no major complaints on either. If you buy one of these, you are fine. So where it comes down for me, I can't speak for you, but for me as I make the decision, it's really not coming down to necessarily this specific laptop or this specific laptop. It's more that if I wanna use this as a travel option, that means I need a home option, like a desktop. And like we said earlier, Mac unfortunately wants $6,000 for their entry level Mac Pro. And it, for that cost and that functionality, it's just not that appealing for me. But for around 3,000 bucks, I can build an absolute monster Ryzen Windows system. And if you like this video and decide you do want to get the XPS 17 and you even want to upgrade it on your own, check out this video over here. Right, we'll do this side this time. Check out this video where I show just how easy it is to upgrade this by actually upgrading this computer. Click here to watch. Click, 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 click. Thanks for watching.